Second point of order, Speaker, is that you are disrupting speakers when they are addressing you. And, and Speaker, Honourable Zungola, please, you are violating please take your seat. Rule 66. Please take addressing. your seat. I'm not done, Speaker. Honourable Zungola, I'm not done. Take speaker, your seat. I'm a member of Parliament. I've Honourable got a right Zungula, to raise a point of order. I read these rules deliberately, and I stated that 14G allows that if in the if the presiding officer is of the view, right? or that a member is deliberately contravening a provision. And that's exactly what you have just done. I request you, I request you to leave the house. I do. Honorable Zungula, I request you to leave the house. Please call in the Parliamentary Protection Services to remove Honorable Zungula. On culture. Good Lego on culture. Hello and welcome to yet another episode. Thank you very much uh, for liking, uh, commenting, and of course, uh, engaging and subscribing with the content as well. My next guest uh, is a member of parliament. African Transformation Movement, Mr. Vuyo Zungula. Mr. Zungula, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, well, you were the man of the hour in Parliament. <laughs> uh, you were <laughs> How does it feel to be the only person to be kicked out in Parliament? Of course, I know eventually the EFF was kicked out, but how does it feel to be like the only member to be kicked out? Hey, Fedro. You know what's upsetting is that you know you've not done anything wrong. Yeah. You know, I would understand if I was violent, I did something wrong, but in a case whereby... I'm pointing out the obvious and without any warning, out. But whatever happens, I'm not going to allow those white shirts to actually drag me out because hey, Oh yes, yes, yes. That's a, that's a very interesting dynamic because that is a, for social media. Mm. That becomes a clip. Yeah. When they dragging you out. Yeah. Because I remember when EFF started doing it. Like people who don't like EFF, they would choose that moment yeah. to make it trend, pay a lot of money to make that image trend when mm. they're dragging you with your pants and yeah. with that uh, exactly. You know, you're a respected mm. man as mm. well. Um, for you, your what is your takeaway from that? Do you, did you? I I know you spoke a lot about it in the aftermath. Mm. Um, it was hegemonic. Um, it was an abuse of power by the Speaker of the Parliament. Yeah. If I were to wrap up your words, um, is is. Do you think that, generally speaking, we're having a problem with the speaker and, and the abuse of power as it relates to um, opinions not being allowed to be ventilated? I think more than the speaker as an individual, sure. but the institution, the institution whereby you've got a ruling party that will abuse their majority. Because a speaker, in accordance to the constitution, must be someone who's um, fair, someone who's objective. Mm. Hence, there's even suggestions, Okuba, you need to have a retired judge because you need to be a speaker of close to 14 different political parties. So you can't come as a speaker wearing the hat of one particular party to make sure that whatever that your role is, you are going to protect that party. So currently, we can change the current speaker, but the issue is that the next speaker as well will come from the ANC. It comes from the NC and also dictator by NC directives as to how um, she must act. Because, you know, the way they kicked me out, you could see by it was premeditated. They do not want anyone that will call them out for the sense is really wrong. Yeah, yeah, you can see that there's a there's a plan to eliminate dissent. Yeah. Um, and then the EFF, within minutes of that, of course, um, were you aware, would you, there were placards and there was a fracas inside? No, because when I was raising a point of order, I'm calling the speaker out to go by number one. You can't selectively read the rules, read the rules of parliament, because when you do that, you are anticipating what is going to happen. Yeah. And that is in violation of Rule 92. Secondly, sorry, Rule 90. Secondly, you can't, when speakers are stating their points, Uber interrupt as they are talking, you are violating Rule 66. So I was just calling her out, but don't do that. And then that got because there was no discussion between me and the EFF. And I was observing the conduct of the speaker, which I believe, Okoba, the speaker's conduct is very important because if she's unfair and she's biased, we approach her, mm -hmm. then you're going to see what happens in parliament whereby people will not be happy. But if you've got a biased speaker, even if we're not happy, but if at least the man in which she conducts her role in parliament is seen to be fair, um, it's going to be difficult for us to actually have a difference now. Yeah. Um, what did you? What was your opinion though of what unfolded thereafter? Because 
um, the EFF, of course, um, eventually there was a mini protest mm. um, and it almost, um, the way that it, it, it acted its way out, itself out was that it was almost confrontational to the president because they were approaching the president. Um, and then the discussion thereafter, after the EFF was, was, was escorted out of parliament, the discussion was about the safety of the pre the, the president. Uh, John Steenhazen uh, stood up and said that um, there were members of the security cluster for the president that were there unauthorized. Mm. Why were they there and not called after the fact? Yeah. Um, and then I think um, there was a member here, Freedom Fund Plus, mm. uh, Mr. Hronovald, who said, look, however it happened, those people were protecting the president. Yeah. Therefore, that's paramount. Whether or mm. not they were there in the lobby or wherever, they were not supposed to be there. But if effectively they protected the president, yeah. then they did their job ultimately. Mm. Um, I suppose the question was is about power and power uh, misrepresenting itself, misinterpreting itself, power uh, overextending itself, mm. particularly as it relates to security. Um, what do you think about everything that happened thereafter? Yeah, look, you know, parliament is is a parliament of the people of South Africa, firstly. And it is comprised of politicians coming from different backgrounds, with different ideologies and different mandates. Yeah. Therefore, it will never be an institution whereby everything Iamba soft, there'll always be contestations mm. uh, because it is a, a highly contested political space. Now, um, those guys, well, now their mandate to protect the president. So if whatever happens, if they view any action as a threat to the president, yeah. they do not need to wait for the speaker. The only people that need to wait for the speaker, it is the parliamentary protection services because Bona, they operate based on the instruction of the presiding yes. officer. Whereas those guys, if they sense a threat, well, that is how they will respond. Yeah, but, but I don't think the president was under threat because in law of having protests, you remember there was a protest, I think it was an IC event. Um, President Zuma was yes, speaking. Yes, I remember. They were, and the women, the, yeah, the young women, yes. were protesting against him. And they were Obama in, in front of Yena with placards. You know, perhaps the difference there um, is that with this one is that it was in parliament, yeah. it was highly politically charged. So maybe ke, with the intelligence, they may know, Tina, we don't know, maybe they thought there's uh, there's a risk or there's a threat to the life of the president. But the next day when he stood up, he said he did not feel any um, any threat. So, you know, but the issue again is that immediately that creeps in. You know, it's going to create an, an unfortunate reality whereby members of parliament will be silenced, will be intimidated um, against speaking out on the powers that be. Whereas we need members of parliament to be actually vocal and speak out against all of their wrongdoings. But if you are going to have a culture of having a police inside, yeah. people going to be removed unfairly, then obviously as it actually amber, is going to creep in our subconscious. Ukuba. We need to um, tone down a bit, which is something that is wrong. Yeah, it's interesting what you, when you say that because that's pretty much the spirit in which people are protesting against that. When there's police presence within parliament, mm. um, then it changes the mood uh, of parliament and there's an intimidation intimidation factor yeah. that creeps in um were you was wasn't anyone aware that the eff came in there with placards like on a lighter note how would they how would they have snuck that in placards and they are all <laughs> organized like when was the opportunity for them to do that you know there's it's not the first time i think it was in the budget speech last year mm. they had placards we never saw them Nangoku, and I, you were next to them. Yes, because on my left there's two EFF people. Um, Nangoku, they were there. I never saw any placards. <laughs> so unless okay, they bafika early, they stuck them under the seat, yeah. or because like maybe overall, we, oh, yeah, yeah, overall yeah. So <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, the the age gap there, or the age profile of a typical member of parliament. Is that something that you look at and it concerns you? You in your 30s, uh, your peers in parliament are usually in their 50s and 60s, particularly mm. from the ru ruling party and some parties as well. Um, how does that affect the work of a parliament if people are of retirement age, mm. um, you know, and then there's so, a lot of committees and people are asked to account on parliament and there's older people there? Yeah. You know, a parliament has been criticized, but it's not effective. It's not doing what it's required to do simply because parliament as an institution 
it's the people, it's the members. So if you look at the members, there needs to be educational capacity. Um, if members are not capacitated, because you are going to have members who can't read, who can't write, um, who can't even, I remember there's a time whereby one entity presented a report which was presented a um, few meetings ago, and none of the members picked it up because they can't read Abanyi. Mm. So, you know, it reduces the quality of the work of members of parliament because if you can't read, obviously, Auzukwazi to do the work required of you. Yeah. Again, if um, one of the other issues, again, we are Abandabam Nyam. So there's always that subconscious, Ukoba, you need to watch your tone when you Absolutely. speak to Umdom Dal. Yeah. But I've learned to go back, but I need, you know, you can be, you can, we can confront, speak the truth, but we take it with respect. So I don't need to be swearing at them. I don't need to be shouting at them. I can still tell them where they are getting things wrong, but without losing that respect that is expected of a 30-year-old 30, 30 person or theta with umto that is 50. But I think also the age factor is um, limiting in terms of, but they can't easily move around, you know, mm. because when you're doing oversight, you need to travel all over the country. You need to stay up in long meetings. You need to read, most importantly, mm. because when entities and departments send you reports, send you their presentations, you need to read. In the meeting, you are able to engage based on something that you've applied your mind on. But if you look at the conduct of members of parliament, particularly from the ruling party, there's no such thing. Hence, you'll check Kukuba, out of the 247 plus members of the ANC, I'm sure you know close to between 30 and 40. The question would be, what are these 210 doing? Yeah. They are not to be seen because buzzy backbenchers, they are not to be seen in the House in terms of debates. They are not to be seen even in the committees where they need to be doing a lot of work. And that speaks to the issue of education, um, which is abanayo, most yabo. And the other issue, it is the issue of they lack independence. You know, Nkule, I don't want to lie. I was so shocked when I got to Parliament because I used to debate in the house, they would heckle, they would howl. But when they see me in the corridors, you know, they will whisper, but in fact, we are on the right path, continue. Mm -hmm. And you ask them, but inside you were heckling, you were howling. And they would say, hey, Fetu, this is politics. We are subjected to our political bosses. So even if you are saying the right things, if it does not, if, if, if it's not in the interest of our political boss, we can never support you. Mm. So that is what is making parliament, again, not to function because you have basically 14 parties. So basically, if the leader of the ANC wants IPPs, regardless whether the other members of the ANC do not want IPPs and they can see what IPPs are going to destroy our country, they can't speak out because, remember, Abanye Babo, they do not have any prospect of employment of a, or means of a living outside of parliament. Mm. So they need to toe the line because should they speak out, and what happens when they're out of jobs, then they're going to be in difficulty. So majority of them would rather stay in parliament, toe the party line, keep quiet, um, you know, and not openly express themselves because they are thinking about their stomachs. So as it stands, there is nothing that speaks to the age limit. No, there is nothing that speaks to the age limit. For example, look at Utat Buteles. He's mm. close to 95, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He would, um, I think the last time he came physically came to parliament was 2020 or 2019. Otherwise, I don't know if he's part of a committee. So in a, in a way, you could say his stay in parliament is ceremoni re ceremonial because yeah. he's not actively doing the work required of a member of parliament, which is attending committee meetings, attending oversights, taking part in debates. Yes, we'll debate once in a while, but given the nature of the challenges, you need to have active members of parliament, not members of parliament that will come once in a while. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting because it speaks to how efficiently... Uh, the parliament should be able to run mm. in solving problems in this country. I suppose you transfer the pressure back to the voter to mm. say vote for a better party with a slightly younger representation. I, I, I say this knowing and sensitive to the idea that there is ageism as well. Yeah. Those of us who mm. are in our 30s, we're still young. It's in, it's in our interest to want a younger representation. Mm. But then how do you strike that balance 
uh, between representing all age groups. What do you think is the average age now? As you look at it, when you just um, scanning through when you're in there, those people don't look less than 40, generally speaking. Yeah, I think the average age um, should be between 50. Um, oh I word. think yeah, be 50. Wow. But I think more than, uh, more than the age factor, you know, Umtu can be 80. But if they still have the drive, they are still able to do the work. Like I said earlier on about the issue of the capacity. Because you can have an 80-year-old sure. with capacity and you can have an 18-year-old without capacity. You find that a person does not have the experience and the know-how to actually do the work as a member of parliament. So I think the trade of Negas Bena is that we must not want to have young people for the sake of having young people. Yeah. We must seek to have abundant with capacity because it's only when you have members of parliament with capacity that they are going to be able to draft laws and play an effective oversight role. Yeah, um, love that point. <sighs> Generally speaking, what's the... Can you tell us about being a member of parliament as it relates to um, minimum requirements, remuneration, uh, the rigor in traveling and everything else? Like, what does it look like uh, in a month? What does being a member of parliament look like? How do you get compensated? Do you travel for free and all of that stuff? Yeah, parliament gives flights, I think, 80-something flights, depending whether whether are you a chief whip, are you a whip, or are you just an ordinary member. Okay. I think others get about 92. Chairpersons of committees get more than 90. Um, the other members get like 80. The flights per year. Flights per year. Mm -hmm. um, they fly across the country. They can't fly outside of the country. Um, but the work of parliament predominantly is in the committees. Because if government has got about 30 departments, small business, trade and industry, <clears> minerals, <throat> then parliament will have 30 committees as well, portfolio committees, to oversee the work of that particular department. So this is whereby, for example, in the case of small business, parliament, the portfolio committee will have to engage the minister to understand what are the plans. They will have to engage CIFA, CIDA, and all of the entities under that particular department. Mm -hmm. So bulk of the work is in those committees because it is those committees, for example, that will come to parliament with a report to say, based on the work that we did um, to oversee a certain department, this is what we found and this is a recommendation. Then parliament passes that report. Um, so if you do not have, um, I'll always go back to the issue of capacity because when I got to parliament 2019, first time being a member of parliament, I don't know many things. I don't know the building. I don't know who to talk to. So it took a while for me to actually know my way around, firstly, the, the institution, plus the available mechanisms of holding the executive accountable, which is utilizing the Office of the Public Protector, Chapter 9 institutions, asking questions, debates, writing letters to ministers, all of those things that are available. But if we are going to have um, what we see in, in our country, whereby there's a high turnover rate of members of parliament, well, the other issue that now is going to happen is that the capacity gets to be reduced because we are going to have new people that need to learn parliament. Then after two or three years, those people get to be removed. So parliament gets to be weakened because the skill, the cap uh, capacity is not kept in the institution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, one of the things that I was following as it relates to your party, ATM, in parliament was the issue of secret ballots uh, that uh, has a precedent i think mm. uh, under our president jacob zuma that there was an allowance by ubale yeah. at some point mm. for there to be a secret ballot i think it was a vote of no confidence if yeah. i'm not mistaken mm. after maybe eight of them mm. eventually one of them was allowed to have a secret ballot uh, where where are we with regards with regards to that that is related to president um, ramaphosa mm. and the pala pala matter and please just enlighten us more about that. Yeah. Look, let's start with the constitution. The constitution says if you are electing a president, if parliament is electing a president, if there's more than one candidate, the method of voting must be secret ballot because you, are ne you need to protect members of parliament, but they need to be independent, etc. So that is explicitly uh, mentioned? In the constitution oh. when you are electing. However, the constitution is silent when you are removing which is via an impeachment process mm -hmm. or a motion of no confidence. Now, the power of determining the method of voting gets to be 
given to the speaker a speaker who belongs to the ruling party mm-hmm. the speaker who knows ukuba if they um, if they would grant a secret ballot then other members would be able to vote freely so that is the crux of the problem secondly one of the other things that is killing our country when it relates to parliament it is the anc using their majority to actually um, you know um, rubber stamp whatever decisions that have been taken by the anc let's take for example the issue of palapal there is an independent panel report and it's experts because it was headed by a former chief justice yes. who says and remember and he's not a politician so he can't be said no it is because he hates the president or he mm. hates the nc yeah he's an independent judge that needs to apply the law so in accordance of applying the law he comes back with a report that says there is a case to answer yeah. now any logical institution would have said all right Here's a report that is saying there's a case to answer. Let us further scrutinize um you know the conduct of the president by establishing a committee. That is what the constitution requires. However, the ANC says this is how we are going to vote. And if you do not vote like this as a member of the ANC, you are going to the you know us of many consequences, meaning yeah. they are threatened. Uh, this was leading up to where they were reading each and every member whether or not they agree or disagree. Yeah, leading up to the to the vote yeah. um, i think it was mr mandashe yes. if any vote kanje if anyone defies the party mandate um, you know they are going to be you know there's going to be consequences now what that says to members of parliament ukuba even if there's a report that is saying there's a case to answer and a logical member of parliament would ordinarily say let's get to the bottom of what happened in palapala by examining or scrutinizing and we can only scrutinize if we adopt the report now the anc comes on and says we are not going to adopt a report even though there's a report that is saying there's a case to answer mm. so they use the majority to dictate to their um, to, to parliament basically what must happen now the issue of a secret ballot becomes important because it protects members of parliament who would want to vote differently from their parties because you know even though we are using a, a, a party list system of elective members of parliament but you need um, independence you need capacity you need members abazokwazi to look at what is before them apply um, their mind and make a determination you know that is why in the previous term when it went to the constitutional court the chief justice said members of parliament take an oath to be loyal and faithful to the country not their party they need to be they need to vote with their conscience they, there's nothing it they need to vote in accordance to what the party says now there's no way in which members of parliament can be protected hence we find ukuba the five members of the anc who voted in support of a report where have been um, charged um you know there's disciplinary there's there there are there, there's disciplinary processes that are taking place for born meaning a secret ballot is there now to to protect, to protect them. because what the court is saying it when the speaker needs to decide on the voting method she needs to ask herself ukuba what is the most effective mechanism of holding the executive accountable mm. yes there's transparency in which um, you know parliament must operate in a transparent manner but the question would be what is it that will yield the best uh, method of accountability yeah i think the the politi- political party context i think trumped that moment because i remember that that would have been a, a few weeks before Uh, yeah. ANC goes to conf- conference mm. going to conference yeah. and it would have been very clear for them that uh if the power the dynamics within the ANC were aligned towards the side of Cyril Ramaphosa they would have mm. then bulldozed parliament mm. uh, that's why the spectacle happened the way that it happened mm. and that's why Ngosa Zanalamini Zuma Dr Ngosa Zanalamini Zuma would would have been one of the first and the biggest names yeah. uh, who voted against a party if you were mm. to put it that way yeah. so Uh, party politics somehow dictate the, dy- the dynamics of parliament yeah. and, and that was a primary example a prime example yeah. of yeah and it is one of the things that is basically making parliament not to be effective because remember the executive which is your ministers they come from the ANC mm. you've got parliament which has a majority of the ANC now when it comes to oversight i've never seen the ANC actively and properly holding the executive accountable 
because if they hold the executive accountable, in fact, they are ruining or they are shortening their careers because what yeah. it effectively means, if you are the president, I'm a member of, um, 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 of the ANC, and I need to hold you accountable, obviously, you are going to use your powers to actually suppress me. I'll never grow politically. That is why you are going to have members of parliament who act like sheep, um, whereas the constitution and the previous court judgments actually require members of parliament who can able to think and apply their independent um, um, thought on the proceedings of parliament, unlike being dictated by parties. So that the, 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 the secret ballot would have been very important in that instance, even though, of course, it would have been counterproductive to the political party, because I think we could deduce that perhaps most of their members of parliament would have voted against Usura Maposa, or they would have voted for him to be held accountable exactly. for Pala Pala. Exactly. Because, because I think the biggest issue the ANC is always failing in, it is separating between party and state. They want the state to operate in accordance to what they want as a party. Whereas the state has got, you know, people who don't vote, has got people who don't even care about the ANC, has got opposition parties. Mm. So the state has to function in accordance to the law. It must not function in accordance to the considerations of a political party. So the constitutional court ruled to Kuba, you need to create an effective mechanism of members of parliament to hold the executive accountable. Mm. And, and what was going to happen that day, the report was going to be passed and then after, there was going to be an inquiry. An inquiry can come back and say there is nothing wrong that he did. Or in, he can come back and say there's something wrong that he did. But the fact that the NC is stopping quite inquiry, yeah. it means it's problematic because it means, look at, for example, what is happening now with Andre Derreta. The NC is basically closing rank, protecting each other from whatever scrutiny that you know um, that they they need to account for when it comes to public resources. We don't care uba baya bolala na bona kwe ANC. We don't care about their party factions. But what we care about it is the conduct of government ministers because. Mr. Ramaphosa was held accountable as a president of the country, not as a president of the ANC. But where the ANC gets it wrong is that it uses their majority to protect themselves um, um, in, in the functioning of the state and does not allow parties in parliament to actually hold them accountable. Look at, for example, even the state institutions. Who Arthur Fraser went to the police station in June last year, mm. um, reported to the Hawks, submitted affidavits, information. Now it is more than seven months later. There's nothing that has happened. Um, look at the issue of the Office of the Public Protector. There's delays, IP delays. Look at SARS delays. Look at the Reserve Bank. There's nothing, you know. So all of these institutions, they fall under the executive authority. So that is why they are finding it difficult to actually openly say you are investigating a president. But parliament, you know, there are people that are coming from opposition parties. And our stay in parliament is not dependent on the NC. Mm. It is dependent on the people. And the people expect us to hold the executive accountable. Mm. So that is what is problematic. In the course of that debate... Um, yeah, pala pala, uh, before people were asked to vote. That, actually, I think when you think about the symbolism of how that looked, it looked so mm. bad because you would have imagined that all of those people are independent. Um, I can understand it, the context of the party, you have to toe the line and all of that. But the way that it looked, they looked sheepish. Yeah. It really looked stupid. It looked you know, bad they, for they were not happy. Yeah. Majority of the people you could see by their voting because they've been threatened. Yeah. But you could see the body language, you go back. You know, they are not really for um, this thing, Ukoba, they need to vote against a report because mm. there's one person from the ANC who said he's going to vote in support of the report. And Kai Buzba, why? Uti, look, it is an ANC led parliament that said Makube Corner, this independent panel. Mm. It is this independent panel that has been appointed by an ANC led parliament that comes with a recommendation, Ukoba, there's a case to answer. Therefore, how can parliament disown its own report and an ANC led parliament disown its own report? So mm. that was the angle. Uh, but majority of them, shame they're thinking about their futures. Remember, Abanye Babo, they can't survive outside of politics. Mm. So hence, they need to do whatever to stay within um, politics. Yeah, in, in, in that debate, someone mentioned the the cost implications of the uh, the judge how much they had already been paid to do the work i don't know it was in the millions yeah so mm. the, the, yeah i think the 
what they were what they were suggesting there was that how could you then sanction this to be done by a retired judge and it costs millions to do and then all of a sudden you say mm. um it must it must be shelved mm. yeah it, it, that's that for me was was one of the shocking aspects of that that millions are being spent mm. uh, and then the judge says there is a case to answer and you say no there's no case to answer yeah you know you know it it, it speaks to how institutions are being are being deliberately destroyed by the ANC in order to protect themselves because like i said Ella, he judge you know if it was a politician you could say ah it is because he does not want the ANC mm. he's a former chief justice and not just um former chief justice nje this guy utatunqoba has got you know he's even um given platforms at harvard all over the world because of the wisdom that he has in terms of law now if we were to talk about palapala as a citizens no one would know now as we speak whether the president did something wrong or he did not do anything wrong mm. but the institution because parliament elects the president the president formally accounts to parliament and it is not by he is not doing us a favor when he counts accounts to parliament it is what parliament um, is expected to do is to hold him accountable now if the institution that holds him accountable does not hold him accountable whereas there's a report that is saying hold him accountable it speaks to how the anc is basically destroying the country and you know it it is up to the people to actually correct all of these wrongs next year yeah uh, interesting we'll get into that uh, because next year has very interesting dynamics at play uh, and of course the idea of a coalition led uh, government we'll, we'll get to that point uh, where are you now with the secret ballot i know it's in courts or is it still in courts what is the expectation um we went to court um we submitted supplementary papers there is no judgment as yet there is another court case now the constitutional court um but we've not received timelines as to when it will be but we anticipate it's going to be between march and april so we are now at the mercy of the courts because politically speaking in parliament we've done what we needed to do um it's only if mhlambi the office of the public protector or ipid or any of these other institutions would come with a report then we will um, activate the matter of palapala but for now um sisa tembele kwezi courts yeah um and andle mutama was saying that you are going to court as gara maposa eh we want to bomb by as loud as court but that's a story for another day um wouldn't that so the courts would then help towards assisting even for future purposes that whenever there's a vote of no confidence make it secret ballot yeah no the courts for now um, or are they only limited to that particular instance yeah. um remember the previous court rulings was to say for a secret ballot to be granted it needs to be a toxic environment blah 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 so based on members of the nc being threatened members of uh, um the udm and pc oh yes, to, yes, yes. also received threatening they were sent death threats. Yeah. so the environment as it was that day any logical person would say members of a certain party are threatened um on their livelihoods members of these two different parties are threatened on their lives therefore a secret ballot um will actually assist because it is also the effective mechanism of holding the executive accountable but what we need um you know going forward is for a motion to actually to change the constitution in that regard to koba because the courts can't say change the constitution it's members of parliament who need to take it upon themselves to say to safeguard what happens in the future because we can't rely on the mercy of the speaker because ngoku even if the environment is so toxic abantu are fighting if the speaker says no the environment it is not does not warrant a secret ballot there's no recourse mm. but if it is given ukuba when you are going to vote for a secret ballot so if you are going to vote for a motion of no confidence or impeachment yeah and or impeachment it must be secret ballot okay um the escom is is very complicated yeah. even now we are using a generator yeah. uh, as we are speaking this moment mm. um because there's load shedding so it affects everyone um Mr. Andre Dereta uh, is speaking uh, a lot of allegations being made uh, and you mentioned something very important in your retort to him 
as you were speaking in media, News from Africa, SABC News, ENCA, mm. and you said, look, there were mechanisms for you to speak and uh, there were there were opportunities for you to talk about the things that you're talking about now. Yeah. One of the allegations is that ESCOM is bleeding a billion mm. um, per month uh, and that is specifically uh, due to corruption yeah. and corrupt politicians. Um, you know, I want to touch on what you think is the problem with ESCOM, but maybe let's start dealing with uh, Andre De Reita, his allegations. Um, why is it that he never thought that he, there is an opportunity for him to to thresh out these allegations in front of Parliament so that people can be held accountable? Yeah, you know, it it, it also boggles my mind because you can't be an accounting office of an entity that accounts to Parliament. We went to Parliament. Um, I think uh, sorry to ESCOM, Mega Award Park three or four weeks ago, um, and they also subsequently came to parliament a week later. In November, they were also in parliament, the board of ESCOM, including the, the CEOs were there. When we're asking these questions, you know, they'll speak in tongues, they'll be vague, you know. They, will never, they were never as open as he has been in that interview. And the issue that we have, or we have as an ATM, is that number one, Corruption in our country is made a matter of perception in the sense that I'll go to the media and say, um, no, Minister Nkululeko is corrupt mm. because he's been asking, um, you know, um, favors for me, blah, blah, blah. And it ends there. Whereas if I were to go to the institution, which is parliament, and they say Minister Nkululeko is corrupt because he demanded that I allocate some of the contracts to a company that um, his niece is owning, yeah. you know. That way the committee can say, all right, based on this, um, um, Auditor General, please investigate. SIU, please investigate. And therefore there's tangible actions that are taken against that particular minister. But if Uzoteta in the news, you know, you know, the news just becomes the news, just becomes perception. Mm. But parliament as an institution, there are recourses, there are mechanisms that are in place to make sure that there's something that comes out of it. So that is the biggest issue that I had with him. What is the problem with ESCOM? What's the root cause? Uh, and where are the solutions for ESCOM? The root cause of ESCOM is that the political powers that be, which is the ruling class within the ANC, mm. including their business associates, um, they want an ESCOM that is basically dysfunctional. Um, and that is not unique to ESCOM because if you check all of the SOEs, they make SOEs to be dysfunctional, to create space for companies in the private sector to take um, take up that um, those markets. Look at, for example, post office. Post office was running very well, um, having profit, servicing the people. But if you look at post office now, you know, it is basically dysfunctional. It is about to retrench 6,000 workers. What has happened in the meantime? Your DSVs, your Aramex, your Postnet, all of these private companies have come in. Similarly, look at um, the the airline industry in our country. We used to have Omengo. Remember, mm. Mango was a low-cost yeah. airline that was a subsidiary of SAA. Now, there's no low-cost airline that is owned by the state. Mm. And that space is taken up by Flysafe. Who owns Flysafe? It's a private company. And I hear it's not even a South African company. So the issue that we have in our SOEs is that these guys, because they've got business interest, they deliberately destroy our companies, our SOEs, to create space for um, their friends in the private sector to actually enter into those markets. Because if you look at energy, energy is very lucrative because everyone, you can't survive in our country. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to Islalin, you know, Ilali are having electricity there. Now, you know that you've got a guaranteed market. Now, it is an, um, an industry that is dominated only by ESCOM. Monopoly ESCOM. Yeah. Now, if you are going to have now competition, now it means you are creating, um, you know, you are, you, the market share will not benefit only the state, but the market share will now benefit other people, which are the friends of the president. Yeah. I mean, that's always been the theory, but I'm happy to hear it being articulated by a member of parliament. Uh, and that's just based on your observation of the scenario, because we always talk about it. Uh, yeah. You know, to substantiate my point, sorry to cut you. Sure. There is, um, we went to ESCOM um, sometime in Jan. When we got to ESCOM, we met the unions. 
unions in the presence of some of the people from ESCOM told us, Ukoba, because ESCOM, there's power stations, and power stations are the ones that need to be maintained um, in order for them to actually be able to produce electricity, generate electricity, and distribute electricity. Now, there is a power station, I think it's Kendall in Pumalanga. It had six units. Now, only two of the six units were working. So this guy is brought in, or this guy who was a manager, turns around those um, that um, power station and has six out of the six um, units to be working, meaning now ESCOM is able to generate electricity more efficiently and we are going to provide electricity to people because six out of six units are working. Unlike before, whereby it was two out of six. Now, that guy was moved from that power station. Kwatamaga seven is a group capital. Whereas any logical uh, management would have said, you managed to turn around a, a power um, station from two units, as Benzai, to six. Um, either stay working and make sure that all of these units are working optimally, so six, or go to another institution, or sorry, go to another power station whereby there are, let's say, 10 units, but only one is working. Mm. So, but they removed him to group capital. Why would they do that? Mm. Why would you move someone who cl clearly has turned around the power station? Because it's not about just the ESCOM at a CEO level. It's all about the power stations. And hence you find, Ukuba, if you look at the reports, these power stations have not been thoroughly maintained. That is why I know well, there's a breakdown there. There's something wrong, Payana. Because if you do not maintain those power stations, what you are most likely going to have, they are not going to be able to work optimally and they are not going to provide electricity. Yeah, makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, to what end can political interest do this? To what end can they continue with the sabotage? Uh, there's a looming strike in March. Yeah. Uh, there's a looming protest. What's so? How do you counterbalance this? I know you're not in that situation. You're yeah. not the one doing the the sabotage. But I'm just trying to um, think from their perspective. Uti, if you debilitate a country, decapitate it, uh, the economy, uh, destroy it, and demolish the morale of its people. Mm. To what end? What what are you willing to take from the people? What if one day they decide that we're going to burn this down because we can see that you're sabotaging yeah. us? No, I think um, two, two things. If you remember the National Party just before 1994, mm. they went on a looting spree because they knew by come 1994, there's going to be elections, they'll be out. It's all over. So for them, you can sense the ANC, but nah, but they have that mentality, but hey, time is up. So hence you find Ukuba, they're looting left, right, and center because they know come next year they will not there will not be a majority. They can't be um there could be a coalition government, you know, they could have um forty seven percent, then there's another party Someone that else can, can help them with Yeah, 10%. but they know Ukuba, they are not going to have the majority. Yeah. That's 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 given. Yeah. yeah. But, however, if you look at um most of the problems, it is their their private interests that trump the country's interest. Because, for example, um, look at the issue of a state bank. If you're going to have the Minister of Finance, a president, and some of the senior members in cabinet owning shares in the banks, it is not going to be profitable for them to say the state must own a bank yeah. because it means they're actually reducing their, 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 their wealth because yeah. it means... <clears throat> Um, the shares will go down, you know, the, the, the there's returns. more competition in the market. There's more competition and a state bear competition, mm. not just a competition, a state bear competition. So that is why you find Dukoba, they are in these positions to advance the interests. Of. Maybe, um, you know, as to why Ingake, it settles in their minds, Dukoba. what if people decide to revolt? Yeah. Perhaps it could be either they think, Dukoba, when that happens, they can easily flee to other countries. We've seen in other countries whereby yes. when there's a change of leadership, people have got houses in Dubai. And, you know, there's welcoming um, countries whereby they know but if this person is running from his country, he's not coming to Dubai and just be a beggar. 
He's coming with a lot more money and is going to improve economies on Dao. So that is one other reason. Another reason maybe they think Ukuba they will pacify the anger of the people with grants because you find that these 350 grants they go a long way in making people not to revolt. Mm. Um, you know, um, the fact that they are given food parcels. So maybe they think Ukuba people will not hold them accountable and they will not revolt, which I think they are mistaken because even the middle class, you know, there's a guy, friend of mine, in 2019, he was paying 7000 on a bond. Now he's paying close to 12000 mm. because of the increase in the interest yeah. rate. Yeah. And there's increase in fuel prices. But if you look at how the salaries are increasing, they're not increasing. So it's not only the poor that are feeling the pinch of this government, but also the middle class are feeling the pinch of the government. Mm. So it, it could be... <sighs> Easy is a stupid word to use in this context, but it could be as easy as the change of political leadership and mm. we won't have an ESCOM problem. Definitely. In your estimation. Yeah, but that leadership, because, you know, you could vote out the ANC. Yeah. The ruling but, class is still the ruling yeah, class. But vote, because, you know, what What I've learned um, in politics is that you capture parties and you capture individuals in parties. So you can vote out the ANC, but if you vote in a party that believes, for example, that the state must not be empowered, meaning you must not have yep. SOEs, for example, the DA. Yep. The DA, that's, that's their fundamental philosophy. Exactly. Whereas in a developing country where you've got more than 30 million people living in poverty, mm. you need proper state intervention. Because if you look at China, how... They managed to get more than 50 million people out of poverty in less than 20 years. It is because of the state intervention. So that is it from a, an ideological perspective. Also, but from a, a, a corruption or political capture perspective, if you are going to vote for a person, this person um, has been captured by the ruling class. Maybe by, by they've got Inud Zake or maybe they know what is done. This person will be a proxy. He'll be there, say the right things. But when it comes to implementing what is the best interest of the country, Lomt will be nowhere to be found. Mm. So you need, the citizens basically need to scrutinize or examine Kuba. You know, because it's not only about the policies. You could have the right policies. You can say the right things. But you need to check Kuba. Do these people walk the talk? I'll make one um, um, small example. Look at the issue of SMMEs or black supporting black companies. Many politicians will say, I vote, um, we support black people, support black businesses. But they were um, expensive European brands. They, um, whenever they are having functions, they do not um, walk the talk, basically. Mm. So over and above listening to what we say as politicians, the citizens need to observe our actions because if I'm acting in a certain way, a person can say, okay, this person it can be trusted because he, uh, you know, he walks the talk. Unlike a person who take a podium and say this, but when it comes to act, he mm. says something different. Yeah, I, I, here's the, the, the challenge that I've always had especially when we're having these political conversations, is that it, it is my opinion that the ruling class uh, does uses its money and power. Yeah. Uh, and you made mention of nudes, uh, for example. That's a, it's, it's a silly example, but they use their resources mm. to gain information on people such that by their time mm. that they try to strong arm you or convince you yeah um they know your strengths and weaknesses mm. they know that you have an unpaid tax bill your five million mm. it in my pessimistic outlook to the future i always say that they can capture anyone yeah globally mm. even on in, in the domestic context is that if they want, because they have unlimited amounts of money and they want more, yeah. if they want, they will capture anyone. And that's the difficulty for us as uh, citizens is that even if, because 
we've seen with um, uh, in the African context, whether mm-hmm. it's the West or Central East Africa, East Africa, that eventually the liberators uh, will be captured. Eventually, yeah. no mm-hmm. matter how strong you are as a liberator. In fact, if we had uh, some of our heroes live long enough, mm-hmm. they would have lived long enough to become villains. Yeah, uh, yeah. Will they? They're strong in our memory, uh, Abu Sangara. They're still mm-hmm. strong in our memory, um, and we hold them very dear. But Live long enough, mm. uh, accumulate or acquire enough debt, and you will realize that their minds would change on yeah. certain issues. Mm. Um, all of them, you know. Uh, so I have this pessimistic outlook that whoever it is is on the ruling seat as a political party, mm. the ruling class will find a way because of their unlimited money to still wield a degree of influence. Yeah, I think that's why it's important that you need to stay away from those guys because... I'll make mention of something. It appeared small, um, uh, but when we're looking at it, we're in a portfolio committee in KZN. So one person who owns mines comes to us, and remember, as um, a mine owner, he, he she has interest yeah. in our work as that committee, comes to us and is like, no man, let me buy you guys lunch, says to the entire committee, a committee that has ANC, DA, EFF, ATM, um, and um, what was the other one? I forgot the other part. So me and this other guy from the EFF, we move back from that conversation. In fact, Masinga Ipa, because it's a car lunch. Yeah. The next thing is by watch. The next thing it will be something else. And by the time we know it, we are deep into the system. So. I would advise, especially the young people who want to venture into politics, it is not sustainable to have leaders that are subjected to the interests of the ruling class because some of them, shame, you you engage with them and you think, but yeah, they agree with you and they see what is right for the country. But because they are so deep into the pockets of the ruling cl- class, you know, they are there defending nonsense, you know, because um, they've been captured. So you need to stay away Regard, like live within your means. If Parliament is paying you so much, live within your means. Don't be excited. You know, you know. Uh, there's this joke, Kukuba. Some of the people in the middle class they all want to go to Kong, a conquer, and want to compete with corrupt people. You know, if you are living within your means, you won't want to compete with a band to that are stealing for a living. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, so that is the way in which the future generation of our country, the future. Um, politicians, the future leaders need to take cognizant of but stay away from those people. It may start with a small thing such as lunch, but trust me, and about John about that in parliament as old as they are, it does not look nice to be umtat umdala with your own family, but uzo banjuange pumlo by the people who control you. Yeah, that's interesting. And and just maybe wrapping up on the ESCOM part, it this is not a problem that should last us for 20 years, it's a problem that requires political change. Yeah, it requires political will because, you know, if we were to examine the books of ESCOM, the years um, um, uh, since Umolefe left, there was a huge drive in terms of maintenance. There was high maintenance of the um, power stations. That is why there was no load shedding because um, the power stations are maintained, they are working optimally. But if you are going now to reduce maintenance, if you read the books, the maintenance figures have um, drastically been reduced. And you can't have a car. It's like having a motor. or you don't service the car. Mm. Obviously, I also operate in the same um, way um, as it used to be. Galactic should be service. So, and if you can ask yourself, why is this not service? Because it's not a question of a comma. Money is there. In ESCOM, there's bailouts to ESCOM each and every year. It's just that the interests of the people that are there, it is not to have an ESCOM that is functional, that is um, delivering um, on its mandate, but they want an ESCOM that is seemingly failing. Look at SAA. SAA had lucrative routes, um, but what happened with SAA? They ended up selling it for 51 rands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you think about it, the market, because there's always people wanting to move between Jobek and Cape Town, Cape yep. Town and Deben, yep. you know. And any logical um, um, government would see, Ukuba, instead of allowing all of these private companies, let's create space and make sure, Ukuba, 
the advantage is on our state entity because by it having a profit, it is another way of re increasing the revenue streams for our country so that people can be serviced, you know. But if you are going to have a lot of competition that will eventually kill your own entity, then it means you're not a government that actually cares about the state. And if you look at the attitude of Mr. Ramaphosa, listen to his speeches on since 2018, he's always, um, you know, pushed the idea of private sector. We are going to have private partnerships with the government. He's always using the private sector. Whereas a logical leader, a logical government improves state capacity. Because if you've got proper state capacity, you've got capacity to actually service the people. One last thing I want to make mention of, look at the issue of grants. There is, um, let's say, an average 20 million people that receive grants in our country. Out of these 20 million people, the, can the company that was used to distribute the grants, a few years ago, they were paid 10 rands per transaction, meaning 20 million times 10 rands yeah. times 12 months. You can see how much they make per year. But why is it that the government would not have said, we've got post office. Let us make sure Ukuba post office is able to do this work. You know, that's, I think that's about two billion in a year. Yeah, it, it, I think it's, it's a lot more. Yes. Yeah. So why is it that they are not boosting state capacity so that the state is able you know, to, to provide and deliver service to the people? Because if you check now, the private sector, they only care about the profits. Um, whereas the state is able to, um, you know, reduce the prices here and there because yeah. it wants to deliver to the people. Look at the trains, for example. You had metro rail trains that were operating optimally in the um, 90s and the early 2000s. Yeah. But tell me, there's no logical explanation as to why are those trains not operating? You could see photos, a car, whereby people even build shacks. Oh, yes. Yes, I come from the side. Yeah, but... And why are they building shack? Because on the railway. On the railway. Because the government does not care. Mm. You know, um, look at the how they are distracting the rail infrastructure. Once but there were there was rail lines, pine mm. but they get to be distracted. Um once after a few weeks, there's nothing. A Kenya had a similar problem whereby they were um they were there was this problem of uh, they were stealing cables. Um, destroying rail infrastructure. The president signed an executive order within weeks of that problem becoming um, huge. And he said he's going to close all of the scrapyards because mm. if you're going to steal a cable, yeah. the exit or entry point has to be a, a scrapyard. Supply and demand. Supply and demand is facilitated by a scrapyard. Now look at our country. How many times do we wake up to there's a cable theft in Daunetil. There's railway lines that were stolen in Daunetil. But look at the non-action from the government. Mm. It clearly shows, Ukuba, they're lacking political will. And I keep asking people, Ukuba, if they could just name one thing in the country, whether it is crime, unemployment, the issue of state-owned um, entities, name just one thing that shows, Ukuba, these people actually care about the citizens. Because if political will... Is a matter of doing something, even if it fails. But you are going to be to Zamil. But in a case whereby there is um, porous borders, they do nothing. There is cross-border crimes, they do nothing. There is um, cables being stolen, they do nothing. There is 21 kids dying in your bed, they do nothing, mm -hmm. you know. So you can sense by ah, man, those these people are just comfortable, um, you know, uh, milking the state but there's nothing that they are doing in terms of fixing our country yeah what's your party's attitude towards next year because i think we we did a lot of uh, podcasters uh, radio uh, we all feel feed into this ecosystem of giving information yeah uh, to people and as a result of that or in the process of that we become opinion makers mm. um, i remember when i had this conversation with uh, that 
I realized how many other podcasters bigger than us who then took the line of, mm. uh, so my headline there was that South Africa will have a white president in 2024. Yeah. Mm. Of course, when you listen to the episode, you can hear Wandle uh, Mutama unpacking it. Mm. Uguti, if the DA is the leader of such a coalition, mm. the DA is led by a white person, John Stenhazen. Mm. Um, and of course, logically, you then arrive at white president. Yeah. Um, you know, And then of course, uh, John Stenhazen goes to Megge's podcast, which is the biggest podcast in the country. But then you start to hear even the SABC following our lead mm. um, and other uh, news platforms following the lead of, oh yeah, actually it could happen that mm. it's a white president. But I suppose it's within the context of coalition parties. I yeah. think we, 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 we have arrived at a point where mathematically uh, and even just sensing the mood and all mm. the things that you've mentioned mm. uh, about inaction, uh, a government that's not caring, that it would be mind-boggling if they ever got 50% or 51%. Yeah. Uh, so next year, anywhere between 40 and 45% mm. estimate, they'll probably settle there. What's ATM's um, attitude towards going to next year? Um, who are you not willing to speak to? For example, there are those terms and conditions. Mm. Um, and there's also this idea that if we logically observe uh, coalitions in, in everywhere that they've expressed themselves, mm. uh, different parts of the country, different metros, uh, it's it's a stop and start. Stop yeah, and start. Yeah. Nothing really mm. happens uh, because people frustrate each other. They take their vote to another one because mm. uh, a promise was not fulfilled and so on and so forth. Uh, just please talk to us about that. Your ATM's stance on, the, on, on coalitions and the problems with coalitions yeah. and 2024 as well. Yeah, I think firstly, South Africa currently has a white president because if you look at the conduct of the current guy <laughs> in terms of thinking, yeah. in terms of ideal, look look at the DA. The DA is not challenging Ramapos. The DA, for example, in many of these sonas, they come out celebrating to say, but we are the one who said this. Look at, for example, the most yeah. recent case, the state of disaster. It is the DA that said state of disaster oh. last year already. Then Ramaphosa announces a state of disaster. I think they are differing as to the extent of the state of disaster. So that is why anyone can see, Koba, the, we are living in a DA-led ANC government, you know, because it is the DA ideologically that is providing direction. Hence, you find that Ramaphosa will say government does not have a responsibility of creating jobs. That is DA, comes from the oh, DA yeah. playbook, you yeah. know. So you can see, but the only difference next year is that also the DA has openly said to Koba, they are willing to work with the, the ANC. ANC on, provided. Provided Ramaphosa is president. <laughs> Meaning out of the millions of ANC people, supporters, they have got faith only in one person. And you only have faith with the person that you share the same values. You share the same ideology. You share the same thinking, you know. So that is the only issue for next year. Now, what I think the citizens need to take for next year is that there's a lot of people who say they don't want to vote. Um, people are saying, but ah, all of the parties are the same, which is not true because they've never tested yeah. the governance of other countries. It's very parties. unfair. It's very unfair to all other political parties. Exactly. And at the same time, when you don't vote uh, or you don't express your frustration into what is happening now through a vote, you are basically saying, no, go right, whatever that is happening must continue. You're not, you're, so you're not voting is basically saying, whatever that is continuing, let it continue. Mm. So for coalition, the biggest issue is that when people are, or parties, whenever they're engaging when it comes to who gets to be mayor, etc., it's all about allocating of um, positions for themselves. You don't hear a strong message, a team, we want land, we want basic services to be delivered to the people. It's always a case of, I'll be mayor, I'll give you three MMCs. I'll be mayor, I'll give you, you'll run finance. Look at what happened uh, at Jobek. You can see but there's an engagement that is there. Look at what is happening also at Kurulene. Kurulene, yeah. There's engagements. Look at what is going to happen in Pretoria. There's engagements. And all of these engagements, you don't see what the priority is. These are the issues that whoever that is government at that municipality level must prioritize mm. fixing of those issues. Because if there's an arrangement, we're going to vote together, 
However, we want these MMCs. Then right from the beginning, you can see it's not about the people. Because what's about the people should be, these are the issues. Let us look who is best suited. For example, um, if we can talk at a national government level, the question should be, what are the major issues? We've got unemployment, got crime, got poverty, you've got state-owned entities that are not working. A, a, a proper functioning, uh, um, a proper instituted coalition should be saying these are the major issues. And then the second question would be, who is best suited to lead the SM, the, the small business department, for example? Who is best suited to head the minerals and resources? You know, mm. then you start thinking capacity. But if you are going to allocate people first without having any care or, or having any regard on whether they are suitably um, um, uh, placed to deal with the problems of that particular department, then these problems that we see at a local government level are going to be there at a national government. Yeah, it's 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 demoralizing um, because that's where we're going. Mm. I suppose there's, I don't think there's any politician who doesn't think that there will be a coalition yeah. government. Um, would so for you? There's no the consideration is policy and consideration is service. Yeah, there's no. We're not doing this with the DA. We're not doing this with the ANC. No. You know, because that kind of thinking, it is not progressive. Because whether we like it or not, the ANC will be in parliament. DA will be in parliament. So you're only frustrating yourself if you are saying, I will not work with a certain party. But you can say, as long as these critical issues, I'll work with anyone that is prioritizing these certain issues. Now, should this person... Um, you know, not one to account. Obviously, we'll hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, but a case whereby we are going to say, uh, for example, let us talk, talk about uh, uh, Andy. We know they've got um, differences with the EFF, yeah. but they agree on certain issues. Now, if they could say, or EFF or PLF saying, we're not going to work together, um, there's no way we need to are going to serve in the same cabinet, simply because our leaders have got some history. Now, it is not about the people. Yeah. And the issue, and I had this conversation with Andile to say, for us who are representing the majority of a band who are uh, marginalized, who are poor, we must not, um, you know, since Bonisinga Kwazuk Seben San, because we agree on the bigger questions. We only disagree on small issues. Mm. So we need to find a way to unite on the major questions that are actually needed to be answered in order to solve the issues in our country and not allow ourselves to be divided on the small issues that, um, you know, that are not really that significant, you know. So we need to unite because if you unite on these bigger questions of transformation, for example, the issue of land expropriation without yeah. compensation, the nationalization of the Reserve Bank, the making sure Koba, the borders are properly managed to make sure about the movement in and out of the country mm. is done in a manner that will not put the country in a security risk. Those are the key security, uh, key uh, policy considerations because if we do not focus on those, then it means we are, we are focusing on things that will not yield benefit to the people. Yeah. <sighs> What's your greatest fear about coalitions? You experienced, uh, you are politically informed, you are a member of parliament. You know their level of aggravation, yeah. uh, their time wasting, uh, whether you like it or not, there is also lobbying. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, me grabbing you around your shoulder uh, and convincing you. And that convincing mm. clearly is usually about positions. Yeah. What's your greatest fear about coalitions? Because we're going to live in that and people mm. are going to complain. That's going to be our new thing. This, this, uh, what you mentioned about trends, following trends mm. and being reactionary, that's going to be our new thing now. Yeah. Uh, where, um, for example, I foresee uh, it wouldn't be far far-fetched for a political party with 6%. Mm taking it away from the government of national coalition, mm. uh, going to the ANC uh, if the ANC needs that 6% mm. and going to bed with the ANC. Even that, how would that um, affect who is president at that current moment? Should parliament sit then and then 
you see, like, how many presidents can we possibly have in one year yeah. because people are taking their percentages from one party to the other as well? Yeah. No, I think if, you know, if parliament elects a president and this president, number one, is independent, knows his story, cannot be corrupted and will act um, on corrupt ministers, then it will be difficult because let's say you elect me as a president next year and I've got all of these qualities. Then another party says, we want a contract from the government with 20 billion and mm. it's not in the best interest of the country. Yeah. I'll be able to say no. Now, if they want now to put a, vo a vote of no confidence, mm. they need to convince the citizens that by removing me, who has been performing and doing well and changing things in our country, is in the best interest of the country. However, if you are going to have a lame duck of a president who's just there, um, not empowered, not um, capacitated to do anything, it's easy to remove you because you are not performing. So the biggest fear or the biggest concern, I understand that in the perfect world, like I stated earlier, um, we need to focus on the issues of principle, the issues of what is in the best interest of the people. But in the real world where we live in, you need to make compromises. Yeah. You are going to have those rogue characters. But we must not allow a case whereby people who are rogue actually dictate the agenda of what needs to happen. So yes, there will be compromises because it's lobbying. No one has got the majority. But you need now as a leader to guide, to direct or guide that lobbying or whatever discussions to be always be about the people. People must be always at the center of what you want to achieve as any person, uh, any government official, especially if you are thinking about your mm. career because, you know, you could be, you could, you know, you could be elected as a president now, say for one year, do the work so well to an extent whereby people want privatization want you out because you're not you not um, you know privatizing the state entities if should they fail sorry should they pass and get you out you have that moral ground to say to the citizens look i've done my work and these are my results mm. now the people in the um, next coming election they can vote you back you know even with more seats because you re you refuse to to um, you know, you re you refuse to be part of an arrangement that is not having the people at the core. So I would say compromises will always be there, but it's up to the leaders to actually provide leadership and think about the generation. Like you said earlier, one day shit will hit the fan in our country, and when that happens, you know, um, look what happened um, in the riots in 2021. Yeah, you had millions. We had we had people from Durban wanting to fly to Cape Town. They were leaving their assets, leaving their cars, their houses, and um, everything. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if this trend continues, this unemployment, this inequality, this poverty continues, we are bound to have more riots in our country. Yeah, absolutely. So if you as a leader have got that foresight, then you are going to be willing, you know, to be ridiculed, to, you know, to be or to, um, you are called names, because when you are thinking about how do you reduce unemployment, if they check, if they chase you out, fine, let them chase you out. But your conscience will be clear, Okoba. You did not compromise on the bigger questions of improving the lives of the people simply because you want to remain president. Because it should not be about the title, Okoba. Um, you know, I, I was president. You know, it's all about, yes, you are elected, for example, now as a member of parliament. But the biggest question comes... Are you effective? Are you doing what is required? Because it's one thing to be a useless member of parliament who's just enjoying the salary, goes around the communities um, carrying a flag, but I'm, not, I'm a member of parliament, but you are useless. You're not adding any value. Similarly, you could be the most useless president ever. It counts for nothing if a band will not even remember your name or when they think about you, they will be so upset to say, under your leadership as president, your unemployment was the worst in the world. Crime levels went up. It counts for nothing. Hence, you need people that are thinking about, you need leaders that will put the interests of the people first. All right. Um, it's a pity that we lost power because I think this is a fascinating conversation. Um, we'll find another way to have it at some point whenever Definitely. you have an opportunity. It's, it's an incredible conversation that we could take anywhere uh, maybe in the last five minutes let's maybe spend time on the atm yeah. uh, and what does the future hold you have two seats in parliament yeah uh, at the moment 
um, goals for you and how do you reach them? Uh, goals for 2024, increasing the number and how do you do that? Yeah, for us in parliament, we've made it very clear, you know, Sisakala. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. You've done a great job of... I don't know other members of parliament. Yeah. And if you, if you, you see, like, I, I know the ones that you're supposed to know. Yeah. EFF, uh, mm. DA, ANC. But the smaller parties, mm. uh, I know a few members. Mkule I think we're IFP. Yeah. And I think the Mr. Singh, uh, mm. if I'm not mistaken. But anyone who has 1% or one seat in parliament, mm. but gets the, 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 the type of media coverage that you do get, mm. that means you, get a, you did an incredible yeah. job. Thank you, thank you for that. You know, when we got into parliament 2019, first, uh, first sitting, it was a debate. So I picked up, if the ANC is debating, regardless whether he's saying something that is nonsensical, he'll always get the applause they of... They clap hands. Yeah. Regardless whether he is saying the most correct thing, the opposition will never clap hands. So I thought to myself, we're only two, so I can't expect the other member to cheer loudly or heckly. Yeah. We said, look, it is not in our culture, it's not in our DNA to, um, to just play politics. Let's go there and be principled as much as possible. Hence, you find that ever since I've been in parliament, I've never sworn at members of parliament. Um, I differ with some of them, but I've never gone to an extent whereby I speak about their personal lives or um, Clamby tease them about their nose if Umtu has got a big nose. Yeah, but because it's not about that. <laughs> I always focus on what the principle. And our, our principle when it comes to debate and everything that we do in parliament, we always have a principle of let us highlight what is the problem. And then from there, state what is the consequence as a result of the problem. Then we offer the solutions. We are given three minutes to debate as um, a party because we've only got two seats. In that three minutes, ever since 2019, we've tried to stay keeping that principle. But I like the problem, highlight the consequences as a result of the problem, but offer solutions because the citizens are hungry for solutions. I know the Indoland, but you come there, you criticize the ANC left, right, and center, but you're not even putting solutions on the table to say, You've got a, cri a crime problem as a country. Deploy the soldiers, um, you know, to these crime hotspots. Deploy the elite units that we see, we seen, we saw in parliament um, to these communities terrorized by Zamazamas. So that is why, and at the same time, it's easy now if we're going to have a vote of no confidence against a president to say, we offer these solutions um, and then you did not follow them. And things have gotten from bad to worse. Therefore, we are going to hold you accountable. So what we are going to continue doing as the ATM, it is to hold the executive accountable and offer the solutions. Whether it's education, it's the issue of the economy, it's the issue of small businesses, but every department or any issue will offer will always offer solutions. And we think, Kukoba, the most South Africans are gravitating towards listening to solutions. It is the more ATM and other parties will grow. But if South Africans are fascinated by rhetoric, they're fascinated by those theatrics, mm. because those things, they don't fix problems. Yeah. What fixes problems is solutions. That was 45 minutes before Ramaphosa spoke. Everything that happened mm. there, uh, you being thrown out the EFF, yeah. I remember was I was looking at the clock. It was supposed mm. to maybe start at Nine, uh, seven or eight mm. can't remember now but I know that it was for, he spoke fully 45 minutes after he was supposed to start speaking yeah so you know that's why it's important to go back and, and we'll always take it back to the citizens because you can't be a citizen um, hate corruption hate unemployment hate poverty but keep on voting for the very same institution or com um, organization that is leading to that you can't be a person for example who hates the privatization of entities, but you vote for the DA. Yeah. Because if you vote for the DA, you are actually voting for privatization. So citizens next year need to take the responsibility for the state of the country post the elections because it is their vote that determine what type of a government. Because, you, you, you know, come next year, if you could have just 10 million people who decide but this party ATM are going to vote for it because it is clearly shown, Okuba, if in two seats, 
it was it has managed you know i know some other people say atm in the this term has worked so hard to an extent it is as if it is the main opposition part mm. if people can say if they were able to be effective with two seats how much more if we were to give them the majority to govern the country you know it means um you know problems could be fixed um you know south africans can live a better life if 10 million people of um take that decision and they go out and vote we could have a new um government because coalition is what we are anticipating or expecting yeah. but if we as a citizens can take it upon ourselves because the voting population is plus minus 40 million abantu were actually go and vote it is always less than 20 million yeah. meaning you've got 20 million people that could determine the fate of our country but they're not doing anything so that is for us what is important but there's, there's also the the almost permanent link between how much you spend Yeah. um with visibility and campaigning and what you get eventually in parliament yeah. that's perhaps in it's not me knowing media and being part of media and trying to convince people to buy my products on media whether it's it is TV or this platform or any other newspaper that I'm part of mm. i know that 10 million people don't just vote for yeah. mm. you you literally have to be in their faces yeah. for so long mm. and spend so much money that they think you they think they're voting for you but you've convinced them, them to yeah. vote for you. I think that's why you find you know majority of parties in our country a party will be formed three of uh, three or six months later they take a trip to London to America then they come back money is not a problem mm. but what is the uh, compromise the compromising actually representing the interests of the people look at for example ourselves who don't have money like um your action essay that receives 15 million per quarter from one person mm. um so we are we are going to find it difficult if we are going to compete in a mal because we said yes politics is expensive but at what cost should we take these monies and we sell out um you know on the interest of the people we decided we are going to be the voice of the people and not the voice of the people that give us money hence you find well, even by coming here i'm not coming with a, a big car a german oh, uh, i was expecting security yeah expecting security all of these big things because as normally for those things you know because when i'm saying to, i think what what citizens need to get okoba these parties that are heavy uh, that are heavily funded that money does not come cheap that money comes at a cost i'm sure you might have picked up um the usa government i think it was parliament they um put through a motion that is criticizing these drills that south africa is doing with russia and china mm. hardly a day two leaders my man no mashaba mm. at the same time they tweet very very similar tweets yeah. and you ask yourself okoba but is this organic it's not organic okay. organic there's some influence that is coming before now the problem is let's say you vote any of them to be president does it mean ukuba as he's going to be executing his responsibility as president the people that are behind him are going to be dictating the line or what needs to happen in our country look at for example ramaphosa he got close to a billion or more than a billion in 2017 there's no logical person that can Um, not believe ukoba those people have interest mm. and ramaphosa must use his position as president to actually take care of the interest of the people that invested in him because they want returns so but if you want to be true to the people stay away from the money that is going to compromise um, you know your role in being um, umtu abantu umtu is going to fix the country because the interest of capital is not a south africa um that is um well governed because look at for example this issue of crime um these private companies are going to increase they are going to increase their tariff they are going to get more yeah. business because crime is on the rise you know so and why is crime not fixed why is crime not addressed because it is not in the interest of the investor of you now as a politician so i would argue ukoba citizens must take it upon themselves i know it's a difficult task to us citizens but people must take the responsibility 
of electing people who they know koba they this president is accountable to him as a voter not accountable to any um, investor any person who gave him money um, because you find that some of these guys um by a debate parliament one day they get a call by mfetu I gave you so much money. You can't be talking like this because you are going to be ruining my business interests. Then a person will flip flop. That is why this issue of flip flopping is around because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it comes from that influence that is coming from Abantu, whereby he says this today, tomorrow he says the, um, another thing. Whereas a, a leader must white is white. Um, if I'm saying Gokoba into a wrong, it must be wrong throughout. It can't suddenly be correct. Um, the next day you know whereas nothing has changed yeah thank you man it's been a very fascinating conversation um i wish you all the best of luck thank you very much for coming through thank you